uh, say no more now, but uh, ask Bill to say a few words, and then we'll ask Lord Babson to unveil the stone. Thank you. Right, you're here for the next hour and a half. <laughs> but if I tell you that on the second, on, on the, uh, in July 1908, the British government made an official view known that nobody had anything to fear for a long time to come from either aeroplanes or balloons. They, too, took a great interest in, in the rights. The government, not to be put off by all this, formed up its Aerial Navigation Subcommittee and stopped all funding for aeroplanes. <laughs> in that year, 1908, Samuel Cody, who called himself a colonel but wasn't, he was an American showman, had been off the ground for 1,300 feet at Farnborough, uh, and A.V. Rowe had done a couple of hops, 150 feet, at Brooklands. So there was private enterprise interest. But uh, C.S. Rolls, who knew the rights quite well by that time, suggested to them that uh, they should get together with the Short Brothers, and the Short Brothers went across there, and in early 1909, they agreed with the, sh with the rights to produce their aeroplanes under license. A patent agent for Wright Brothers was Mr. Griffith Brewer, and he came and he found Laysdown. He thought it was a good spot, it was nice and secure, out of the public eye, and so the Short Brothers bought from a Mr. Andrews 400 acres of golf links here. Uh, the Royal Aero Club was, uh, the, the main light in that was then called the uh, Aero Club of Great Britain, was Frank McLean, who became Sir Francis McLean, and he then arranged to turn the golf links into an airfield, and that airfield then opened in February 1909 and was made available to all the members of the Aero Club. And the first person to come here was JTC Moore Brabazon, who had purchased a Voisin aircraft in France the previous year called Bird of Passage. He brought it here and began to experiment with it. And in the weekend of April the 29th to May the 2nd, he managed three separate hops. The first one was 150 yards, the second one was 250 yards, and the third one was 500 yards. And I think Lord Brabazon might like to relate to you what's in the Brabazon story about that 500 yard trip, because it was clearly quite a trip. But that 500 yard trip by a Briton in Britain was that accepted by the Gorel Committee in 1926 as being the first ever flight by a Briton in Britain. And that took place here. By that time, the Shorts had had the uh, agreement with the rights to build their factory. And only two days later, on the 4th of May 1909, the Wright brothers came here and they looked at the factory, inspected it, and gave the go-ahead for aircraft to be produced under license. They were all sold prior to production. C.S. Rolls had two of those, and perhaps to get his own back on the way that the government had behaved, he sold the first one to the War Office, who took it away to Farnborough to experiment. And that perhaps was the start of army flying, and the had succeeded in doing a circular flight here. That was observed. If you think that's like the one that was <laughs> by November of that year, which had become pretty sodden here, and, and Frank McLean went off to Stone Pits Farm and Shorts moved their factory there, but for some time to come, both East Church and Laysdown were used for those early experiments of flying. Oh. The British aviation. Oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Well done. <laughs>
Of course, what they were trying to do was not easy. The engines that they were using were temperamental and very highly stressed. They had a constant battle to find materials that were light enough but strong enough. For example, he finally managed to get a wooden propeller for his first plane, the Bird of Passage, built for him by the manufacturers of lavatory seats. They were the only people who had the necessary technology and one wonders whether they found a whole new market in which to divest. Diversified. Rab described the sensation of flying in the Bird of Passage like sitting on a jelly in a strong draught. <laughs> I have to say that that is not a sensation that sounds very appealing. His description of rising to a height of 500 feet by mistake rather than by design during the Michelin Cup in shorts number two built here in Chepe is even more alarming. And I quote again, the little seat about the size and shape of a plate was poised on the extreme edge of the lower plane of the biplane and it was exceedingly draughty. Your leg stuck out in front on, on slides and operated the ailerons. Your right hand held the elevator control and your left hand the rudder and there was just nothing between you and the ground and nothing to hold on to in a crisis, even if you had had a spare hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, really. Uh, Shepard Island yeah. sent me um, three films.